Hi guys, welcome to this week's tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you the techniques I use to optimize a model. I will cover optimizing a triangulated model and a quadded model. You should be able to achieve something like this using techniques taught in this tutorial. Anyway, we're in Blender now. And um, obviously for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just gonna optimize this door. I'm going to show you first uh, the quadded model, and then we'll move on to the triangulated model, which is up here. You see that here. First things first, you want to enter edit mode, which I'm already in. You can enter edit mode with tab. Then you can switch to edge mode with two, or by clicking the UI element up here. And what you want to do is find an edge. This one works. And then do alt plus left click, or right click, depending on what you've got set in your settings. And then X edge loops and now you've removed that entire loop like so now obviously this process is mostly the same thing but i've had a lot of requests for this tutorial which is why i've created it there are no shortcuts to doing this quickly you just have to go through and do it manually um automated methods that do exist aren't really that great um so you are better off just doing it manually my technique is going through and starting from a certain point so for example here and then missing one, selecting the next one, missing one, selecting the next one, missing one, selecting the next one. Now I don't always do this in certain places. It depends on the density of the mesh. Like for example here, it's it's quite um quite dense. So this is something that will get optimized like so. Edge those loops. Now the shape is still here, but it's just lower lower quality. Now, the seams in particular on this are super high density, so those are another area that we can get rid of. We can just edge loops on that, and that's done it pretty much all the way around, almost. And there's another one here. Now you can see here, if I uh, switch to the shaded view, and then switch to a different map cap, but this one here is a supporting loop. Now a supporting loop is what will control the normals of a particular corner. So if I remove this one, which I shouldn't, really do you'll see the the roundness of this will change so you can see how now it's super rounded the shape isn't very pronounced so you want to avoid removing loops from areas like this because um you'll mess up your uh shading but something like this this loop here this loop here is not needed and you can tell because if i remove the shape the shading doesn't really change you see? So that one can be removed. And so can this one. And technically, both of these could be as well, like, if you really wanted to go nuts with it. But you do need a couple of supporting loops. So I'm going to keep that one and remove these two. I'm going to keep this loop here. It's another supporting loop. But I'm going to get rid of this one, this one, and then this one. Like so. Now, for more complicated areas, such as where this uh, door handle is, it can get a little bit difficult. Um, obviously, triangulation is okay in some areas, uh, but it is best avoided because you want your smoothing to look correct. Like, for example, across this whole space, it looks fairly, fairly good. But there are there is a little bit of detail that can be removed from this. So we can grab this inner loop and we can remove that. And still somewhat keep the shape. Now if you wanted to still keep this sharp. You could go around here and mark this sharp. Now obviously this is down to personal preference. Whatever it is you want to do. But if uh, you're not particularly happy with the shading. After you've removed some loops. Then you can go through and mark it sharp. Which does look fine. Obviously, like I say, it's up to you. You don't have to if you don't want to. Now, in my opinion, I think there are too many loops over here still. So we're going to remove one more. This one is not a supporting loop. You can see the supporting loop is right there instead. So we can get rid of that one. And we'll see how this one is. Yeah, we'll get rid of that one too. So X and then edge loops. Now... Obviously, like I say, it's personal preference. You can go through and uh, remove as many as you want or as little as you want. Ideally, especially with a car such as this one, um, the overall poly count is what matters most. So you don't have to take all of the detail away from a specific part. If you take 
some detail away from lots of different pieces, then overall uh, your poly count will be a lot lower. So now that we've covered the quadrant model, we've optimized that a little bit, we will move on to the triangulated model. Now the triangulated model, uh, in this particular case, you will not be able to just do alt left click on an entire loop because the model is triangulated. It's not possible to do that. So you need to convert this to quads before you can optimize it. And this is where it gets fairly time consuming. So I'm just going to show you how this works on an area of the door rather than the entire thing. So we are going to convert the area that we want to um, optimize to quads. Now you can do this two ways. You can either go through, select each triangle and then press F to fill it, or you can select each or select a, just a bunch of them and then do Alt J. Now you can see here the Alt J, which is the tries to quads tool has messed up how this works. You can see how it's uh, converted this one to quads and leave these two as tries. And that's something you need to keep an eye on. Now what you can do is select these and convert them to one by one. Or what I generally do is I'll select like a just a single loop like this all the way up until it gets fairly dense and then convert that tries to quads. Generally that works without fail, but obviously you need to just keep an eye on whether you, uh, keep an eye on it to make sure it's working as intended. So we're going to do the same with this one. And you never really want to do like a whole big loop at a time. So for example, going vertical, I don't really recommend with convert into quads um, because that is where it's most likely to cause issues where it gets really dense usually. So once I've converted an entire loop to quads, I can then do alt left click and select the entire loop and then edge loops. And you'd have to do that for every area you want to convert. Uh, sorry, you want to optimize. This will get fairly time consuming, but uh, there isn't really a simple way to do this. There's no quick way. You just got to do it properly and get on with it. Um, I hope this tutorial was helpful. I know a lot of people have been asking for it. Obviously, the process for actually doing this and the workflow is very basic, but doing this for an entire vehicle for example for example this entire bentley is obviously going to take some time so that's something to keep in mind as you can see here this one's fairly high poly like so so yeah hope the tutorial was helpful thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one